Today, let's talk about some higher inductive types widely used in homotopy theory. Researchers haven't fully agreed on the scope of higher inductive types, but everyone agrees some are essential to have. The first one is homotopy pushouts, that are destroying sums plus additional paths. Let's start with two types A and B. Now, we add a type C in the middle. For any point C in the type C, we will add a path from A to B where the endpoints are given by two functions f and g. Every point in C generates a path. In ECTA, a homotopy pushout is a type with three constructors. The first two are the same as the ones in destroying sums, and the third adds the paths indexed by C. Because everything respects homotopy in type theory, usually we drop the word homotopy. In category theory, the parameters are organized as a span, and the pushout is the most general type with inclusions from both sides such that the diagram commutes up to homotopy. Pushouts are essential because we can define so many other types using them. Everything we will mention today is definable with pushouts. Another equally powerful higher inductive type constructor is homotopy coequalizers. Again, we will drop the word homotopy from now on. They are like one-sided pushouts. You can code it up in EGDA. It's similar to the code for pushouts. In terms of category theory, you start with two parallel movisms, and the co-equalizer is the most general solution to make two movisms equal after post-composition with the inclusion. This is why they are called co-equalizers. Pushouts and co-equalizers are equally powerful. A pushout can be viewed as a co-equalizer by folding the shape and placing the two sides together on the same side. Conversely, a co-equalizer can be viewed as a pushout by adding a middle stop to every added path. Each point in B generates two paths, so you need two copies of B as a type of middle stops. In sum, co-equalizers and pushouts are equally powerful. With pushouts or co-equalizers, we can define many, many interesting shapes. First, the suspension of a type A adds two points and a path between them for every point in A. Let's draw the suspension vertically and name the two new points north and south. The new paths are called meridians, inspired by how we label a place on the Earth. The ECDA code follows the same naming convention, where each meridian comes from the north to the south. From the Earth's analogy, you can see that the sphere is a suspension of the circle as the equator. The n-sphere can be defined as the iterated suspension of the Boolean type. Please see the lecture video on truncation levels for more intuition on this. Next, the weight sum of two pointed types A and B is like the destroying sum of them except that their base points are connected. These types play the same role as destroying sums for pointed types. Here's the ECDA code. A pointed type is a type with a point, and they are passed as two arguments. Next, a smash product of two pointed types A and B is a quotient of their product by their wage sum. However, it's probably easier to explain it with a diagram. For simplicity, let's assume A and B are sets of points, each with its distinguished points. The product can be drawn as an array of points. You want to squash all the pairs where either the first component is the distinguished point of A or the second component is that of B. The pairs matching the criterion are marked. It's basically all the points in the first row or the first column. These pairs are exactly the weight sum of A and B. We want to squash them. One way to squash all these points is to add two extra points and some passes to connect everything. In ECDA, the two extra points are called base L and base R. The glue constructors give you the paths. We will see why smashes are useful, but let's move on first. The next one is joins. A join adds a path between any pairs of points from the two sides. You can easily code it up in ECDA. Alright, so we have defined many high inductive types. There are many neat equations between them, and here are a few. On this page, X, Y, and Z are pointed types, and A, B, and C are regular types. I want to bring your attention to the bottom left box. 
These are quite cool. The smash of two circles will give you a sphere. There are some nice animations on the internet if you are interested. The bottom right one is also important. It motivates the smash products. They play the same role as pair types for carrying in before pointed types, where functions between pointed types need to preserve the distinguished points. Yet another useful gadget is the end truncation, which gives you an end type that best approximates some type. We have seen the propositional truncation, and this is its generalization to any truncation level n. The trick is to kill homotopy above level n by filling in any image of this n plus 1 sphere, and here's how to do it. For any image of the sphere in the type A, we will fill its interior. The filler is a cone, which is made of a hub and a family of spokes indexed by the sphere. Let's check its actor code. We have two constructors, hub and spoke, which can kill any higher homotopy. They effectively say the type being defined is at level n. We cannot write that down directly because it doesn't fit into the grammar of high inductive types. Well, at least not everyone allows it in their syntax. Personally, I think it's fine to have special support for truncation levels. Truncation satisfies the universal property that, for any n type b, there is an equivalence between the functions from a to b and those from the n truncation of a to b. In other words, any function from a to b extends to the truncation of a. You have proved this in homework for propositional truncation. There are many other useful constructions I cannot cover, otherwise it will take me one year to make this video. One example is set quotients, which combine the idea of co-equalizers and zero truncation. You will see this in homework 7. Another useful construction is the sequential co-limit, which gives the limits of a sequence of constructions. For example, one can define something as fancy as the infinite sphere as the sequential co-limits of n spheres. If you want to learn more, the hub book has some. The takeaway is that while we haven't agreed on the exact syntax yet, a wide range of high inductive types can be defined in terms of just push-ups. Bye.